So, like an hour ago, I read The Pigeon by Alex- or I almost said Alexander Suskind. Patrick Suskind. I don't know where Alexander came from. Uh, really good book. It's about 77 pages long. It's a short story about a guy who goes his whole life just wanting to live in a sense of normalcy. He's ripped away from his only family at a fairly young age. His mom gets sent off to like a mental institution sort of place and, and never turns up again. Similar thing happens to his father. He ends up being a farmer of sorts for his uh, like uncle and then has to go off to war after he gets drafted uh, he ends up with a woman who he's set up to marry, and then that woman subsequently betrays him and goes off with, like, a more exotic guy after they have a kid, and that's like four months after they have a kid. Rough, rough start for the guy. He had a tumultuous upbringing. He had a, he had circumstances in which things were changing a lot, and you can tell that it was very traumatic for him that he had to deal with the arrangements in his life moving about uh, so quickly and so forcefully. And so he wants desperately to just live in a sense of normalcy. He ends up living in this like one room dormitory kind of place uh, that doesn't have electricity, uh, doesn't have like really, it's really not like a proper dwelling. It's quite a small place. It only gets electricity in the, in the 60s and he starts living there in the 50s. So he's there for quite some time working close by at a bank as a security guard all the while having to, you know, uh, share a, a toilet with all the other people living there. And a, as time goes on, he does get electricity and um, he's, he's able to build up the place that he lives by getting a better bed and stuff. But he's seeing everyone who once lived there beginning to live somewhere else that now it's mainly used for, like, African immigrants or uh, people, you know, like, like people in, in school, uh, college students who are, who are trying to save money. But by the beginning of the book, you know, once we're uh, a couple pages in, we begin to see that he's paid off, you know, most of the room at this point, and he's happy to just continually live his life as a uh, security guard for this bank. Things only get shook up when all of a sudden he's met with uh, the reality of a pigeon outside of his door. It terrifies him. He needs to go to the restroom and we sort of get the, the internal commentary of him um, needing to go to the restroom um, that when he was already anxious about the fact that he may stumble into someone on, on his way there because he just wants to be left alone. That's sort of his entire goal throughout the book is just to be left alone. Because, again, being around people means that things are going to be shaken up. It, it means that there's going to be some level of change within his life. And now, 1984, he's lived in this, in this small dwelling for decades, working at this, at this uh, bank job for decades, and he does not want anything to remotely change because the thought of bearing a change um, brings back the cruel and tireless memories of his upbringing. And so he ends up confronting this pigeon terrified, thinking he's going to have a stroke because he's an old man at this point. And uh, he has to relieve himself of, of his uh, urine inside of his home which uh, is like a disgusting thing for him to do because he's incredibly neurotic and uh, the idea of doing like an uncivilized thing like that just, just makes him quake. Um, and uh, it, the next day when he, when he goes to work, he has to, he has to like deal with the fact that there's all these feathers and, and, and bird poop everywhere and he's, he's just disgusted by this. Uh, he in, and so he decides he's going to live at a hotel until um, the the bird is gone, and he has no idea when the bird will be gone, which is which is kind of funny because if you're living in a place that's owned by a by a landlord with a bunch of other people living there, you'd think someone would file a complaint or get rid of the bird themselves or have someone clean down there, but no, he, he's he's just cycling through all of the. Uh, all of the potential years that the bird might be there. So by the time that 
you know, he gets his, his coat on uh, in, in the middle of, like, bright August, uh, and he gets, you know, all of his stuff together to go live in a hotel, he's already thinking about all of the different scenarios that could play out with this bird still being there possibly forever, which is kind of ridiculous. This guy has just been alone for so long uh, that, the, that the moment he's confronted with even the smallest change in his life, um, you know, the, the, that, that annoyance ends up calling back to those suppressed memories. And uh, his reaction is to, you know, get completely lost in his own paranoia. By the time that he gets out, he can't properly do his job anymore. He ends up interacting with the, uh, like, the garbage lady who's, who's, um, who, who works at, at the place um, that he's living at, and, uh, you know, he, he just talks very strange to her, uh, and throughout the rest of the book, he's just getting these physical problems um, at his job and not being able to do his job properly, uh, going nuts when, like, uh, when there's a hole in his clothes, um, and just little things like that. Like, the book is essentially throughout the course of a day, or, you know, the very end of the book is after the day is over, but the book is, is throughout the course of a day, you're just seeing his mind lose it. Uh, he loses control. Um, he, he's just rambling to himself in his head about everything. Um, and seeing him fly off the handle and uh, watching his body deteriorate, watching his mind deteriorate, is kind of the point of the book. Because it's, it's a completely mundane scenario, but the reason why it's intriguing is because the characterization of, of the main character is so good. Like, the... As you read this character talk, it feels consistent with all of the all of the story um, that had been uh, laid bare up to that point. Where it's not like it's not ham fisted. It's it's not like they're forcing you to um, to be presented with this character uh, in, in a way that would um, that would uh, caricaturize him. You know, like it's not meant to be extreme or in your face. It's all subtle. It, it all feels very much like they're showing you rather than telling you the events of the story. Um, and that the things that they're showing you all feel in line with the uh, characterization of that character and the events that came um, before. And so, um, with uh, every little kind of neurotic moment that you see uh, within the story, it always feels very much in line with who the narrator is. Uh, it always feels very much in line with um, what what would what would come of someone like this. And uh, the end of the book was really cathartic for me specifically um, because this is spoilers right here. I'll just turn the video off if you're concerned about being spoiled for the ending. But uh, the end of the book, he's like jumping through puddles in the rain, and uh, he's just so happy jumping through these puddles after he gets up from the hotel that he's been sleeping in after um, being uh, scared to death by, like, the sound of lightning. And um, he he feels like he feels like a kid again. Uh, at that moment, when, when he hears um, supposedly the sound of someone banging on his door, uh, he believes in that moment that, you know, someone that, that he had just awoken from being uh, an adult who had toiled away his entire life. Um, you know, at this, at this dead-end job, and that, you know, the, it, there's little moments in the book where he's kind of questioning the meaning of all of this, but they're, they're not particularly pronounced, they're just sort of blips in the story, and by the end, it all, it all sort of comes, um, to a culmination in which, uh, he, it's, it's almost like, like he doesn't know that reality is still there, that, like, he, he thought it was all a grand dream for a moment, and, um, it, it comes with him just saying, like, I, I desperately, like, wanted someone here, you know, um, you know, I, 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 I wanted, you know, I wanted to be around someone, and yet he spent his entire life alone, he spent his entire life uh, secluded, more or less, um, just trying desperately to remain anonymous, you see him um, get into uh, get into little problems uh, in, in his in his own inner inner monologue, 
um, with, for example, uh, not wanting to be recognized by people, wanting to minimize interaction as much as humanly possible. And at this point, uh, at nighttime, he just breaks down. And the day before, uh, before he went to sleep, as he was eating his food, he thought, you know, tomorrow would be the day I kill myself. Um, but it's here that uh, he, you know, he breaks down and essentially admits that he wanted to be around people this whole time. And that's when you see him run out, run out of the hotel, jumping in the puddles like a little kid, and then running back to the, to the home he had always been in. Seeing that the pigeon was gone and that everything had been cleaned up, the window where the pigeon would have come in had been closed. And of course it was closed. Of course everything had been cleaned up. The, the idea that the pigeon wouldn't be gone or wouldn't be clean, like, that was all made up in his own head. It was all a product of the same paranoia that would have led him to, um, you know, trying to keep himself as anonymous as humanly possible. The kind of paranoia that, like in the beginning of the book, um, would have led him to listening to the sounds of people going to the restroom from uh, his own doorway as to not go to... Um, the uh, the shared restroom while someone else is in there or is going to there um, and have himself be seen or have himself be recognized so he could keep his anonymity as intact as humanly possible um, and there's all kinds of little neurotic moments throughout the uh, 70, uh, 77 page novella um, and it's really good I would highly highly recommend it if you're a fan of uh, mundane a psychological horror uh, that's meant to meant to invoke a sense of insanity. Um, the the way that the inner monologues are written are just it's really really good. Um, it, you you never get the sense that uh, that this is being that this this is being put towards you in an unrealistic or unreasonable way. Uh, it all felt very characteristic of the people involved, and um, I think you know the it's probably the best or most in-depth depiction of insanity certainly like this that I've read or seen in general just because it's spent through more or less just the span of one day so you're forced to um, uh, be at grips with uh, all of his inner thought processes as they're um, occurring so uh, I would heavily recommend reading The uh, Pigeon by uh, Patrick Suskind. I've had a copy of that book for so long, I can't believe it was only just now that I, I ended up sitting down to read it. Um, I, it's, again, very short. Uh, you can read the whole thing in one sitting like I did.